Welcome to All About Artist. And today we welcome artist, author, Yanoff. Welcome to the show, Arthur. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. And before we start, I want to thank Ma Matthew Tucker, Joan Herbert, and Nicole Brown for making the show possible. And thank you so much. Without you, we would not have had a show today. I, I would also like to thank you and, and Dave Fabiano and, and, right. for coming. And I'd also like to thank Marge Macon, a wonderful painter, for recommending me. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Marge, yes, she's a wonderful Marge. painter. We've had her here. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. we did. Yes. Um, can you tell us where you reside? Uh, right now? In, in Great Barrington. In Great Barrington. What is your background, Arthur? Um, well, my, ba my background, my background uh, is uh, basically Lubavitch Hasidim uh, from uh, m both sides of my family. Really? Yeah. And at what age um, uh, did you start painting? Um, this is a, a very interesting question because I later found out that in terms of getting involved in painting, in drawing, in of the visual arts, uh, had a, a connection that I didn't know about when I first started with Henri Matisse. Oh. Uh, I was sick in bed, and uh, my mother, uh, I was about six years old, five or six years mm -hmm. old, and my mother drew um, a picture of Mickey Mouse to keep me occupied. Yeah. I copied her uh, rendition of Mickey Mouse mm -hmm. and I couldn't stop drawing. And with Matisse, he was, uh, he was much older. He was probably in his 20s and he was sick and his mother brought him a watercolor set and he started using the watercolors. And he said before that time, he wasn't even that interested in painting. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So it was an interesting connection. Mm -hmm. um, Arthur, tell us about your development. Uh, well, I uh, continued to draw cartoons for a long, long time, for many years, and then I went through a kind of transformation uh, when I was a teenager, probably about 15, that I, I, I decided that it wasn't enough for me and I had to be a painter. I, I began looking at Van Gogh's paintings and I do remember, I do recall uh, when I was about 12 that I, uh, at a visit to the MFA in Boston, I saw a Cezanne still life with a blue vase and I got so turned on by that color, by the mm -hmm. colors in the painting. So uh, I, I, I think that uh, in some ways I still have a feeling for c cartoons when I draw. I like cartoons myself. Um. How, um, what were your um, influences other than that? Ah, that's a really good question. Uh, when I was in art school, I, I, I was classically trained and uh, I, I, I worked 
from models and so forth and still life. And I also uh, w did studies after the old masters. And uh, what I also did was go to the opposite of my own temperament. Uh, for example, uh, when I was a younger painter, I was my way of working was closer to, say, uh, a painter like Tintoretto. But at the same time, what I would do is uh, make sketches from Ang, so I, I wouldn't just be locked in to a particular thing. way. Yes. How did you move, I mean, excuse me, why did you move to New Hampshire from Boston? Um, I felt that uh, I, I was loaded with too many people in Boston. It, um, and I, I, I thought that it was the time to uh, move away where I could work more. Uh, sometimes people would be climbing up the second f story to visit. It, it just got... It, just became too um, difficult. Uh, I needed more privacy. And once I did move to New Hampshire and I got used to it, um, I couldn't go back to living in the city because of space. I, I, I got really uh, intoxicated by the space. And the vegetation and the rivers and the, the, right, all the landscape, of that. Right. Wonderful. But, but I, I grew up on the ocean myself. Oh. I, the house that we lived in was about a block from the ocean, and I could see the ocean from uh, the sun porch. And I think that it always affected me uh, in terms of the color uh, and the light in my paintings. Uh, it, I think it, had, it made a very deep impression. So even when I, even when I uh, paint uh, from the, the landscape, the uh, connection is still with the ocean. Yeah, I love the ocean. I always said I'd rather live in the ocean or the mountains. Yeah. Yes, the both places are so wonderful. Why? Are, uh, what are the Holston theories. Oh, while I was in New Hampshire, I became uh, close friends with William Holst, who had studied with Hans Hoffman. Mm -hmm. And uh, Holst had particular theories about painting uh, that were based on Hoffman, but uh, with uh, Holt's own uh, slant on things. And to tell you the truth, uh, hardly anyone understood these theories. Hardly anyone. Mm -hmm. However, uh, as a painter, because language, uh, verbosity, words are not necessarily our medium. Mm -hmm. uh, I was eventually able to internalize uh, some of what he said, and I remember doing a series of small paintings of car parts that I picked up from the junkyard <laughs> doing these little abstractions. Um, tell us about the paintings you brought, like this one here, what, a, what the... Uh, that painting uh, was from a series I did, that I, I got a grant, and I, I worked with the uh, Hasidim from Springfield. Uh, mm -hmm. It was it's, uh, called Ethiopian Shabbos, mm -hmm. and uh, I set up candles and 
hollows and so forth oh, yeah. and, and work from them. Because I actually don't have a mind. I mean, Pollock, Rothko, and so, uh, Mondrian could work from their heads. Mm -hmm. And I can't. I, I know some really, uh, I've known great abstract painters who would take, who would go into their studios and block everything out, everything. Mm -hmm. If I have to have things around me or else I get depressed, it's just a matter of mm -hmm. who I am. You, mm -hmm. And so I always work from things. Well, I, so you always work from things, but you shut off your mind. Did you ever, do you ever, um, emotions ever flow on the paper? Or is it just objects? Um, Would you say what I, that? What I think is that I, I use things, I play around with things that I see, and uh, then what I do is push stuff around in the studio. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I think of something that Cezanne said. You know, yeah. I, I was in, I, I spent a couple of years in New Mexico, and uh, the landscape was very beautiful, mm -hmm. but uh, it uh, wasn't my landscape. Uh, it uh, it felt like, as Cezanne said, too much like what it is. And I, I had to come back to the Northeast because th the space was a lot closer. The panorama was not for me, even though it was quite beautiful. And I do notice that sometimes aspects from, New from being in New Mexico will get into my work. And the one in back of us. Oh, that uh, is that is called Roger's Landing. It's from a project that I did uh, of the Thimble Islands. Uh, the, the story behind that is um, I I was uh, on the docks at Branford mm -hmm. with uh, Samantha uh, Scott Pinckney, who curated uh, the Melville show. And uh, we sat there at looking at the docks, mm -hmm. and then something just mutually clicked in our heads. We both knew I had to do a project of <laughs> that particular place. And then she said, uh, my husband and I have a cottage on the Thimble Islands. Mm. And you can only get there by boat. And we'd like you and Marsha to spend the weekend there. And you can sketch. And I, and so I, it was so fantastic. It was so great to be there. The light uh, and the privacy. And uh, I sketched for about two or three days. Mm -hmm. And then I set up forms in my studio. Uh, and I worked. And of, uh, then uh, Bob uh, Burns from the Mattertuck Museum and uh, Gary Shiro, who had been the director of the Hudson Opera House, came to the studio uh, with uh, Cynthia Rosney, their curator, and looked at the paintings and uh, said that they wanted to show them. And uh, Samantha was uh, the curator for the show, along with Cynthia. So. That's how, that's that how this, be, yeah, that's what happened. And it's beautiful. Norman and that's Norman also Norman. from the Thimble, that's also from the Thimble Islands. It's called uh, Gull's Catch. Uh, Samantha uh, titled the paintings. Yay. 
and I, I do use I do use collage yes, with uh, the paint with acrylic paint. Uh, um, how I uh, how I got into collage was that I did a lot of work on paper, I, I, a, a lot of watercolors, and I found that I was throwing out perfectly good watercolors because uh, there there were areas that were overworked. Mm -hmm. So I began using little bits of collage, mm -hmm. and uh, that got me into it. Also, uh, it's interesting how things reach you after many years. When I was younger, I studied briefly with a sculptor who had me do uh, collages of, with uh, construction paper. And what he emphasized was stresses and uh, forms that pushed back and forth. And I found that uh, that uh, turned into uh, something that I could uh, experience later. Even it's it also, I, I think that, you know, when we talk about influences, um, I mentioned that uh, when I when I was in art school, well, I about Tintoretto, but I was also very uh, influenced by the expressionists uh, like Kirshner uh, in those days, um, and I found that uh, later in later in uh, life, I turned more to Giotto. Oh. I, there's something about what I call a kind of tender geometry in his work. So I, I, I think that one must be receptive to these changes. Uh, one of the things that I actually, uh, that I like about Mass Mocha, for example, it keeps me from being held hostage by my own history. <laughs> and uh, the one that's in front of us? Um? Uh, uh, that is Prometheus number six. Uh, I was visiting uh, the Thomas Cole uh, House, or the, or the Thomas Cole uh, National Historic Site, and uh, 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 the director, Betsy Jacks, was showing me around, and I noticed uh, a painting of Prometheus by Thomas Cole. Mm. And I said, Betsy, Betsy I said, I've just got to do this project. And so what I did was uh, I worked from s photographs of the area and also, I set up uh, vultures and so forth, fake vultures in my studio, <laughs> work from them. And uh, I pushed the stuff around. Uh, another, uh, another big influence was uh, I did a, a workshop at Bay St. Paul. Uh, the painter Tom Barron and I were invited there. and. Uh, there were six of us Americans and 10 Canadians. And the uh, curators and critics, uh, 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 Clem Greenberg was there, and uh, Karen Wilk, and uh, Renee Huig, who was then director of uh, the Louvre. And uh, Karen, uh, we each had our own table and area. It was a big uh, hockey arena. And uh, our, what we were what we were asked to do was eventually do a, a very large canvas, six by eight inches, mm -hmm. six six feet by eight feet. Mm -hmm. And uh, Karen was looking at my uh, works on paper, and she said, 
how did you do them? And I said, oh, on the table. And she looked at me and she said, get on the floor, paint on the floor, you'll disorient space. Oh. And that, uh, that changed my life. How, uh, also, uh, the other things that uh, changed me from oils to acrylics, uh, Ken Moffat, who was the uh, then d director of, of the curator for contemporary art at the MFA in Boston, uh, I had a meeting with him, and there was a show of uh, abstract uh, painters, mo I think mostly American, uh, expression, uh, abstract expressionists, color field painters. And uh, I was looking at the show with Ken, and he said, one of these painters is using old color. Which one is it? And I looked around, and I actually picked the right painter. And that got me thinking about working with acrylics because it was new color. Unlike anything in this world or the world to come, it really <laughs> is very different. And mm. uh, I remember going to a show in Santa Fe, and the painter said that, um, he said the great thing about these acrylics is someone came up to me and said, uh, you know, I can't tell the difference between your acrylics and oils, and I would be, myself, be deeply offended if mm. they thought that my acrylics were, looked like, were the same as oils, because uh, I try to use acrylics as acrylics, not as a trump, not as an oil trump, mm. and uh, it made a very big difference in my life. And they also dry quicker. So you don't have to wait. <laughs> they do dry quicker, except uh, I, in, right. uh, I, it, except in the summer when um, there's so much humidity. They, oh, they, they do right. take a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, what was the use of uh, college? Collage. Oh, the, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I said college. Ah, oh, that's my dyslexia coming out. No, 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 no. It's <laughs> probably, about... probably. It's no, that's that, me. It, it, oh, no, that's it's, me. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, well, let's go to the neck thing, because don't we have some? Uh, we have yep. some more on the uh, screen that you brought. Oh, this, this is. This is lovely. Oh, this is also from Prometheus. Uh, and that is uh, what, there's something sort of, uh, I, I would say th there's a, a kind of playfulness in this, but also uh, I feel of, of premonition on the right side. I, but I, I don't really like to get into uh, too much uh, literary uh, talk about a painting. I like them to be themselves. You know, someone once said, no one asked James Joyce to draw uh, pictures uh, to describe his books. Uh, and by the way, what? he, he uh, he set me free when I read, I remember reading him when I was a, a, a student and he gave me courage. Well, that's always nice to have. Yeah, he gave me courage, yeah. Oh, I think we already talked about this, but what happened when you spent two years in Mexico? Did we talk about that? Already? Yeah. Uh, I think we did. Well, I met Marsha in Mexico. Oh, maybe we didn't. Uh, Where? But uh, I, uh, I was in Mexico for a couple of years, and uh, I, made f I, made, I became close friends with a physicist who had a uh, 
foundation. And he said, you know, he said, you're really like a duck out of water here. He said, I don't know. He said, what are we going to do with you? You're not, you're not really capable of pumping gas for a living. He <laughs> said, we've got to send you back east. And that's how I, that's that's how how I ended, ended up. Yeah, uh, that's how I ended up. Well, let's, up have a, let's have another painting. I think we have some more. Y yeah, there are. I think. I think there's a couple more. Yes, here we go. Uh, this is steerage to Ellis Island, uh, and this was shown. In the, there was a group show uh, with, an, um, with about five or six painters called uh, Rural Urban, about painters with urban minds who live in the country. And uh, this was from uh, steerage to Ellis Island. Uh, how I got into it. Uh, sometimes what happens is that Marsha and I uh, come up with uh, projects. Uh, we go through a diff a, uh, different variations of, of different ideas, and uh, we, you know, we came up with that one. Well, we've got a couple of mi minutes left. Uh, is there another? Um Painting quickly, I think. Yes, that's a beautiful one. Oh, you the a the uh, a tree surgeon uh, had an idea. Uh, he uh, came by, and he said, "You know what? I've got all these tree rounds." Do you think you could do paintings on these tree rounds? Oh, for God. And I thought about it, mm -hmm. thought about it. Somehow or other, I couldn't do it, but it got me thinking about mm -hmm. uh, working from uh, shapes of trees. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, twigs, uh, branches so forth and uh, so I did yeah. this series mm -hmm. and the painting that was on the screen uh, came from uh, from the uh, area the uh, that was part of the Bennington Museum. Now I, we uh, only have, I don't want to interrupt you, but we have about 15 seconds left. Is there anything you'd like to say? Uh, 15, in 15 seconds. Yes. Oh, I think that this was wonderful. I'm, I'm so happy, happy. to be here. And you, uh, it was, it was very nice. I, it, you were right. It goes uh, by very fast. I told you it, it would. It goes <laughs> by very fast. And, uh, and I guess we'll have to say goodbye, folks. <laughs> Bye, folks.